Welcome back everybody to Synalytics Crypto. My name is Mike, happy to be back with you guys. I'm sorry that I couldn't post videos in Mexico, but like I said, uh, the internet was pretty bad there. But um, I wanted to get this out to you guys today because I think I have stumbled across something that I think is gonna be really, really good. And so fortunately for me in this channel, since we don't do sponsored reviews, I can speak openly and plainly and honestly and truthfully about this particular project or any project I um, want to discuss on this channel. So before we get into this, you guys, I'm sure because of where this video is going to be posted, that there's gonna be a lot of new people looking at this channel for the first time. So as you can see, we're still relatively small, just under 4,000 uh, subscribers, but we wanna get that number up. So please go click the subscribe button, it only takes a second, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, however you choose to do it. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Um, this particular project is a little different and I think that's what I really like about it. So um, I'm gonna get into this with you. This is a, a, a little, this is new for me because what this forced me to do, just like any time I've grown in my ability to engage in cryptocurrency, is this forced me to use a new platform. It forced me to use the Binance Smart Chain through PancakeSwap for the first time. There was a little bit of a learning curve for me, but uh, some of the people in the SPE Telegram helped me quite a bit with um, navigating this whole thing and trying to, to buy this particular project, which I ended up doing. Uh, so I'm officially invested in this, full disclosure. And uh, shout out to you guys for all of those who helped me do that. I really appreciate it. Um, so like I said, a little bit of a learning curve. Um, I will get into making a video probably later sometime soon here about the Binance Smart Chain and what it took because I didn't want to connect my MetaMask. Uh, I like to avoid situations where I'm connecting my MetaMask to several different things. I really just, it's it's very... A private wallet for me. I don't like to open myself to any sort of hackers or any sort of people who are out there trying to steal my crypto. So what I did was I found out that I could actually open a Binance smart chain wallet, which I did. So now I can use that wallet completely separately from my MetaMask to engage into the Binance smart chain. This ecosystem is incredible, you guys. I can't believe it took me this long to get there because uh, the fees are like almost nothing, especially compared to Uniswap, which I find fantastic because there's a lot of problems with the fees in Uniswap, although the accessibility is great and um, the interaction with the platform is, is wonderful. Um, you know, the fees are rough. So this is the reason why Binance is doing so well, uh, by BNB, the token, uh, it's the utility now now that I've actually done it firsthand has opened my world to a whole new level of crypto I'm very excited about it um, like I said I'll get into a video a little bit later about how to use it um, but basically before we talk about my experience buying let's look at save planet earth so save planet earth is a they want to plant a billion trees which is awesome. Me and La Planta Corazon here, we like trees, we like um, clean air, and you know, I would rather help and dedicate my time, money, energy, investment, whatever it may be, to planting trees rather than taking down trees to print worthless paper dollars, which if you follow my channel, you know that this is the ultimate poop coin, the ultimate airdrop coin, this dollar here isn't worth the paper it's printed on and it's certainly not worth our wonderful trees that help us breathe oxygen. So I do like this project based on what they're trying to do. We're gonna look at the white paper here in a minute. We're gonna talk about the tokenomics because the tokenomics were the initial reason why I had trouble buying this particular project. Also combined with the learning curve of using, of using the uh, B, uh, BNB smart chain platform. So. Before we look at all these things, let's just go to the one reason that I really was like, okay, I, I see where this is going and I like where it's going because if you've seen some of my other videos, you guys know that uh, I am a, a, an acquaintance of Tony Hawk. He, um, I've known him for a very long time. We've grew up in the same town. He used to come in the restaurant that I uh, worked in all the time. And uh, we, we know each other well enough to bump in each other on the street and he would uh, recognize me because of my old affiliation with the restaurant I worked at. So, dude, great guy. I literally have known him since I was a kid. Dude's a legend. Um, this video here is what is the first thing I saw when I came across Save Planet Earth. And so I thought this is kind of good enough for me to kind of look into this. And the more I looked into it, the more I decided that I would actually go out of bounds and out of my comfort zone and try to get this project, which you can only get on the Binance Smart Chain through PancakeSwap right now. So let's have a listen to what Tony has to say here real quick. And you guys tell me what you think about what you're hearing. Hey, what's up everyone at uh, Save Planet Earth, it's Tony Hawk, and I just want to say 
first of all, thank you for what you're doing. Um, it's, I think it's a great crypto project, and congratulations on getting it started. And I wish you guys all the best. Uh, I know that what you're doing is, is rare and um, is kind of the exception for what's happening in the crypto world these days. There's a lot of greed out there, but I feel like you guys are, have got the right mindset, the right approach, and, um, and I'm trying to help you get the word out. So we only have one planet, and thanks, you guys, thanks to you guys for doing your part, and good luck in the future. Uh, I can't wait to hear all the good things you guys are doing. See ya. All right. Well, there's the man himself uh, talking about this project. So, a couple things to unpack here, guys. First of all, the celebrity endorsement. What a great way to start off with Tony Hawk. Uh, whether I know him personally or not, um, I mean, he's his worldwide name. You know, he's like the Michael Jordan of of a whole genre of sports. So, um, celebrity endorsements and influencers pretty much run the internet at this point. And I like to see things like that. There's another thing here that I just want to say. The fact that Tony Hawk even is talking about a crypto project. Um, amazing. Imagine if this happened in 2017 at the end of the bull run. You know, we might not have even entered a bear mar uh, market territory. So uh, wonderful things. From what I hear from Save Planet Earth, they have a whole bunch of celebrities, um, influencers, whatever, that are going to be coming out endorsing this because... You know, the concern for planet Earth, and especially when it comes to planting trees and having a healthy ecosystem, uh, is, is global. And that can reach every corner of the Earth. So, you know, combining these kinds of things that I'm initially starting to find out about this project, uh, I really like it. It's worth taking a risk for me. Um, even if it goes to zero, I feel like I at least gave it a shot. Now, we're all here to make money. We're all here to have healthy investments. We all know that. But to get behind something that has something more than just crypto and more than just making money attached to it is a good thing. La Planta, she approves. She's got a big heart. We love our trees and we love the um, earth being healthy. There's too much pollution. There's a lot going on. Hopefully this can reach out into other countries and become more of a humanitarian thing as well because there are starving people in this world and it's not just about the plants and the trees. It's about the people. Um, what's the point of having a healthy earth if there's no people here to enjoy it? So I'm just uh, sharing my heart with you guys on this particular thing. But uh, so yeah, Tony got me interested. Um, the telegram is great. They have a great telegram chat. Very, very helpful. Let's look at this. So first thing I see is, uh, you know, look at the 24 hour low, 24 hour high. So it's bouncing around, um, you know, 50 to 100 percent of of its relative, you know, um, what's the word? Uh, uh, oh, gosh, I'm drawing a blank here, guys. Uh, anyways, look, it's got some volatility. Uh, the volatility is, is around, but it's a new project. Look at the volume. $213,000, that's nothing. I mean, that literally, this is just a baby here. This is literally like any of those trees that are gonna grow, they're just, they're little seeds in the ground right now. And uh, if you know this channel, you know I like to take some risks. Uh, getting in early is where you can generally make, you know, some of the biggest gains. So uh, I am in on this and I'm happy about it. Let's look at the circulating supply. I don't know what the, um, I don't know what the circulating supply is right now. I can't seem to find that information, but the overall total supply is a lot. We're talking about, you know, thousand trillion. <laughs> um, we're gonna look at some of the tokenomics uh, on the white paper here because there is a breakdown. There's a huge burn mechanism. There's a huge. Um, I really like what the tokenomics do. As an initial buyer, I was a little turned off by it, but. Um, well, you know, I guess we could just talk about that right now. Nothing special to look at in the chart. It's just kind of going between, you know, whatever that number is to whatever that number is. So, you know, I got in right around that number on the seven right there and uh, I'm just holding, you know. Uh, I transferred. It was the first time I've ever even really bought or, or well, I didn't really hold the BNB because I sent it over and I um, used it right away through the Binance Smart Chain to buy this token. So, um, thankfully, now I'm in a new ecosystem. I have a whole new um, uh, genre of videos to make for the YouTube channel because uh, I like it, what I see, and I'm very, very happy. Worst case scenario for me is now I have that separate wallet to do all kinds of new things with, and I'm very excited about it. So, there's the price. Um, doesn't say the market cap, market dominance, none of that. Trading volume's minuscule. Uh, 24 hour low, 24 hour high. Seven day low, seven day high. Not much of a difference there. Um, 
all-time low here. We're not too far off the all-time low, which is what I like. I, I'm not getting into this after some massive pump. I mean, this is like, it's either going to go to zero and I'm going to lose all my money, and or it's this is going to be a 10x or a 20x or a 50x or whatever. I mean, if this project takes off with its global reach and its celebrity uh, back push, it, this could be big. So, like I said, it's only on Pancake Swap. Um, from what I hear in the Telegram, sometime today or sometime tomorrow, it's going to be listed on its first uh, centralized exchange, which is Whitebit. I don't know anything about Whitebit. I've never really heard of it until just recently um, because of this project, so I can't say anything about that particular um, centralized exchange, but people, uh, a lot of people have heard about it, a lot of people know about it, and they're talking it up pretty big in their telegrams. So um, it's just probably one of many. Uh, I can see this project, if it really does what it's what they're trying to do, um, I can see this project maybe not having to buy its way into a Binance or not the fact that it's even on BNB or Binance uh, Exchange or not Exchange. Um, the, the smart chain means that there's a backdoor entry into Binance, but imagine people getting behind this. Imagine people really wanting to, to use this, even if they're using it to just promote their, their good faith in humanity for their own um, centralized listing exchanges, listing it for free and promoting it for free. And you know, if this gets the backing that I think it's going to get, it could just kind of have a life of its own and really take off. So as an investment purpose, uh, I think this is amazing. If they're going to actually do what they're trying to do, then that's great for everybody. So. I do like it. Um, let's go take a look at, that's the website. So if you wanna access the website through uh, CoinMarketCap, you can't. I had to go to saveplanetearth.io. I know they're trying to re, um, up their website and redo their website. So if you're, if you're going on there and you're looking at this project and you click on the website from there and it doesn't load, don't freak out. It's not an anonymous team. Um, this isn't a rug pull situation. I don't think that they would have people uh, like Tony Hawk backing it if that was going to be the situation because it would make a lot of people look really bad. So um, just to get that out for you there for you guys, if you want to look at it yourself um, and read the extensive white paper, which I'm not going to get into. This is not a deep dive. This is just a surface level thing for Synalytics Crypto Channel followers because I am now invested in this project and um, I'm pretty happy about it. I'm just going to sit there and I'm going to hold it and enjoy it. So saveplanetearth.io is the website. Let's go into the uh, white paper here. Um, basically, you know, they want to plant a lot of trees. They want to plant, I think they were saying a billion trees. I don't know, you know what that time source is. I don't know exactly what it's going to take logistically to get behind this, but obviously, you know, um, they do have a vision. They do have people talking about it. They do have backers. Like I said, not an anonymous team. That's a great one. So I'm going to skip most of this. I, I implore you to do this research yourself, DYOR always. It's always good to um, know what you're throwing your money at and nobody can do better research than yourself. So go check that out. Um, but what I want to talk to you about is my experience buying. So here's where I had trouble. So I went on and because this was the first time I tried to use um, the Binance Smart Chain wallet, I tried to buy, it wasn't going through. It said, go check with your wallet and, and approve the transaction. I go check the wallet. There's nowhere for me to do it. I'm thinking, what's going on here? So I ended up buying and testing um, to see if I could buy a different cryptocurrency. Um, if it was just me or if it was user error, because oftentimes with me and technology, it's user error. Um, so I bought like a couple dollars worth of alpaca and it went through and I was like, okay, something's not right. So I got on the telegram, I'm like, yo, why can't I buy this token? So the guy said, basically, you have to set your slippage to 8%. And I thought, 8%, what is this, some sort of scam? Is there gonna be arbitrage in the middle? Is someone just gonna come and you know how it works on Uniswap if your slippage is too high? Um, you say that you're gonna buy this many tokens and, and by the time the transaction goes through, you're like, why am I missing 6,000 tokens? It's because you got arbitrage and you got screwed because the bots played you. So not the case here. Uh, I know from firsthand, I know from the actual buying experience that I did, that's not the case. So when you, the reason why you set it to 8% is because when you buy these tokens, there is a 5% transaction fee added to locked liquidity. I know that sounds like, okay, well, I'm getting screwed out of 5%, um, but there's two parts to that because number one, you want to have added liquidity. If you buy a project and it goes up and things are good and it comes time to sell and you want to do whatever and there's no liquidity, you can't sell. So liquidity is the number one thing across the board in all you know economic factors, you need to have liquidity. It's funny because I'm going to mention real quick, everybody's pretty hyped on the story about Elon Musk selling 10% of the Bitcoin that they bought 
and blah, blah, blah. And everyone's like, oh, you're weak. You got, you know, paper hands or whatever. No, dude, he's testing the liquidity. Why, why wouldn't anybody want to know what they're putting their money into is, is liquid. You got to be able to sell it. So a uh, little side note there. But anyways, um, what I do like about this, and I will show this in my actual next video because uh, I did end up buying a hundred and forty billion dollars, not billion dollars, excuse me, <laughs> woo, 140 billion of, uh, of these tokens. And the reason I mention that to you guys is because the other 2%, which is part of the 8% slippage fee, is that a 2% reflected to token holders implementing auto staking a governance protocol layer and a yield farming aspect will also be added as soon as we can develop a secure function, frictionless community approved and a way to implement these features. So, um, auto staking. So when I bought these and I, I'm holding them in my wallet, they're already automatically being staked. And the 2% that's being kicked back to those who are auto staking, i.e. people who are buying and hold the tokens, um, seamless, quick and easy, um, is so my portion, the 140 billion tokens that I, that I hold is a portion of the overall tokens. And as people are buying, um, some of that's going back to me. So my, it's not 2% based on what I have. It's 2% based on, on the allocation. It is based on the allocation that I have, but it's basically, you know, um, my portion versus the, the overall whole pool. And since I'm in early, I actually watched my, um, I mean, I made like 3 million or I don't know if it's either 3 million or 30 million tokens since I've bought this because the 2% auto stake is actually working. I can approve this. Um, I saw it with my own two eyes. I thought, wait, didn't I just buy it? And, and I thought, I thought, wow, this is, this is big. So, um, Tokenomics are, are cool. They're a little different. Um, you know, you pay 5% on right away, but you're adding to the liquidity, which is good for you in the long term, and you're part of automatically being staked and getting this reward reflected back to you, which if you hold for a long time and you have a lot of tokens like I kind of do, look, I'm not ashamed to say I pretty much aped into this. I mean, I... I got myself a good portion of BNB and I went in and I bought. One thing to mention you guys, and I wish I could pull it up, but I don't because I actually have the wallet on my other computer, or do I? Okay, no, my wallet is there. I'm not gonna log into it, but um, I do have the Binance um, Smart Chain wallet there. So you wanna use the V1, which is the old version. You don't wanna use the V2 um, because first of all, you don't get as many tokens. It's 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 not working right for whatever reason. So you have to go to the V1 old. You have to use the 8% slippage or else you will not be able to purchase this. Um, so if that's too much for you to get around, I totally understand, but uh, it was a little bit much for me, but I decided to take the plunge anyway. It totally worked out. I'm very happy with it. Um, Long-term hold. I like earning that that 2% kickback. It's, it's pretty good. So, um, Introduction of the SPE token will launch the SPE on the blockchain on the 9th. Let's go. So total supply. Yeah, big, big number, right? Big number. The biggest number I've ever seen as far as um, tokens <laughs> ever. I mean, we're, we're past the trillions here, which is a lot. But let's look into this. So 100,000 million billion. So 250 trillion, roughly a quarter of the pre-sale tokens not sold but burned. That's what they're saying. Uh, 100,000 million billion, so another 5 trillion uh, DX sale pre-sale fee, okay? Um, 100,000 million billion, 200 trillion pancake listing pool. So I suppose that's the pool um, of existing tokens that uh, which I own 140 billion of. So uh, that makes sense. And the initial burn of 100, 400, um, Trillion. <laughs> this, these numbers are so big. So many zeros. I have to really, you know, think about this. But okay, so um, 100,000 million billion. So 145 trillion. 100% locked team tokens vested over time via DX sale for marketing purposes and manual burn. So there's going to be a ton of burning involved. So don't let the the number of total supply scare you. Now, to me, I don't quite understand, and I never did understand why a project makes a certain amount of allocated tokens and then begins to burn them. Why not make them, just not make them in the first place? I don't know. Um, even though I've been in crypto for five years, this there's this is such a big pool of information. It's hard for anyone to really, really understand everything. So please leave some comments below, first of all, about this project directly, or if you know anything, or if you understand anything about this project, or you understand what you know token, token burns are even for. Um, 
because it's a little bit beyond me, but that's okay. There, there must be some reason for it because this isn't the only project to do it. A lot of people do it. Maybe it's they do it just because it's like, hey, we started off with this, but now it's like this many. It's it's like the opposite of the money supply, right? I mean, crypto's burning tokens and things are limited and, and, and the US money supply just keeps getting bigger. Um, they're not even printing dollars anymore. They're just putting numbers on a screen. Kind of strange, strange world we live in. But um, anyways, so there is a lot going on here. I would like to do a deeper dive, but for the sake of keeping this video not too long, I just wanted to show you my entry into this project, my entry into this Binance Smart Chain, why I got a second wallet, and why I'm very happy with the fees that are involved with buying projects this way, as opposed to Uniswap. Listen, Uniswap better get their stuff together. If Uniswap V3, I know I'm a little off subject here, but why not? If Uniswap V3 does not find a way to compete and Ethereum does not find a way to lower the gas fees and um, keep people coming into the ecosystem, stuff like BNB is going to take over. This is the reason why that token is number three now. I mean, I did not see this coming, but now I get it. I finally get it. Um, pretty amazing what's going on. So. Like I said, um, do your initial research with this. I am officially dubbing this a crypto, a Synalytics crypto uh, hidden gem because relatively it is still hidden. It relatively could be a gem. It's We're in early. It's got a very um, low market cap. I don't know what it is, but I know it can't be that much right now with the volume only at over $200,000 worth of trading. So is this a high risk project? I would have to put this into the medium to high range risk for right now. That could change based on some things. I will be honest with you, the move that they did with Tony Hawk, whether they approached him or whether he knew about this and just wanted to give his own two cents on it because he's a good guy and he sees where he's coming. You know, The fact alone that he did that is really why I initially got into this project. I want to see things grow from here. I want to see things do well. I want to see them actually go out there and plant a billion trees. <clears throat> what I really want to see is them do some humanitarian work as well um, because whether you guys agree with this or not, human life is more important. Um, and then plant life, but at the same time, human life can exist without our little plant friends. So, um, you know, uh, like I said, medium to high risk for right now, that could all change. Um, I do also put this at a very high reward. So for me, when I get involved in something that is medium to high risk, let's just call it high risk for sake of purposes. Um, if it's high risk, it better be high reward because if not, I don't want to be in it. I've always looked at Bitcoin as you know the least risk and stuff like Ethereum as the least risk, but I've always looked at it as least reward because, um, which is not true overall, You know, it's, it's always better to be in things that grow and, and that aren't gonna disappear overnight because in crypto, those things do happen. But um, you know, when you start chasing the immediate 10X gains or you know, beyond that, anything time, anytime you're going over 10X, it's, it's crazy. Um, but uh, for, for investment purposes speaking, um, but, the high risk offsets the, uh, I'm sorry, the high reward offsets the high risk for me. So everybody has their own investment strategy. Everybody looks at things differently. Um, if you were to just go all in on this project, it would not be a smart thing to do. Um, but since I allocated some of, you know, I took a little bit of here, a little bit there to get into this and um, so glad I did. Can't wait to make more videos about the ecosystem that is the Binance Smart Chain and everything that's going on with PancakeSwap. I can see now why the pancake swap token itself has done so well. It's hard for me sometimes to get into projects that are already in the multi billions um, because it's just it's hard to see the growth in that. But really, you know, as this bull run, which I think is not over, as a matter of fact, we've talked enough about Safe Earth that I can possibly get out because I don't know any more information. But let's get back into some more um, just analysts, uh, syn syn analysts of the market. Um, the bull run, right? So we had some FUD. We had the whole Biden tax thing. We had, uh, you know, this happens in crypto and you know, dip happens, right? Um, you know, everyone, it's so funny how so many weak-minded people are involved in crypto, which is part of the problem. You get shaken out so easily when the price dips. It's like everyone buys something and expects it to just continue to go forever, which is just not feasible. But um, that was a blip on the screen. And I didn't have a chance to make videos through that whole process because I just was... On vacation, the internet was terrible. When I came home, I was exhausted, had to redo a whole bunch of stuff and take some personal time to just figure some stuff out. Um, but here we are, and it's like I said, and I, I do keep up to date in the Telegram, so if you haven't joined, please join because I'm, I'm involved in that daily. 
uh, because it's my only way to reach out to people and people who are more involved with the channel. I like to be able to bounce opinions off and leave little voice messages every once in a while. Remind you guys that I'm still alive when I happen to disappear in the jungle for 10 days. Um, but I was telling people, look, this hold on, hold your breath, hold your breath, hold your breath. Um, because pretty soon you're gonna be able to breathe again and realize that this is just a blip on the screen. The market is actually very healthy. We need these pullbacks. This is the third such 20 plus percent pullback during this run. The last time I think there was like eight or nine. So we're right on pace to be basically heading into the third or fourth inning of this bull run. So we have not seen the blowing off top. We have not seen things go absolutely parabolic yet. I'm a little bit more afraid. And, and as far as an ex exit strategy is concerned, when I start to see blow off top moments and I start to see everything just go completely completely Richter, I'm going to be taking off like 90% of my holdings and putting them in, in, into either Bitcoin or stable coins because um, that's the way to play these cycles, these four year cycles. We're not anywhere near that yet. We have not seen the explosive growth. Bull run is not over. Bull run is not over. We are not even halfway through. We're going to see some pretty amazing things. You got to remember that crypto is a hedge against the world economy right now. Don't forget that. Um, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. You're looking at things like gold and silver aren't even going up as they usually do as a hedge against the dollar because crypto now is on the scene. And um, people from the stock market are not just looking at stocks anymore because crypto is on the scene, right? We got all kinds of positive news. Yes, regulation is coming. Regulation needs to come. They have to have these things layered so that um, we can really get the deep, deep, deep institutional involvement in here, which will send crypto's market cap into the multi-trillions. Right now we're at 2.151 trillion. A lot of money, right? But it's kind of really not. Um, gold itself already has a market cap of almost 10 trillion. So we would have to 5X just to get gold's market cap. Now, in my opinion, Bitcoin is the new gold. Bitcoin is better than gold in just about every way other than the fact that you can't physically hold it. But most people who are invested in gold don't really physically hold their gold anyway. They're trading on paper contracts, which is why it's so manipulated. But um, is Bitcoin manipulated? Yes, whales are involved. So with regulation comes less opportunity to completely manipulate the crap out of this asset. Right now, it's all driven by news, it's all driven by bots, it's all driven by whales who are out there uh, uh, wrecking people's longs and shorts, which was why I hate leverage trading, and I don't care if I say it in every video, I hate leverage trading. It's what's wrong with crypto, it's gambling. I wish that they would regulate that and completely get rid of it worldwide. You don't need to gamble with an asset like Bitcoin, just buy it and hold it. Just freaking buy it and hold it. And if you want to gamble, go buy low cap altcoin gems because that's gambling. You know, essentially, it's really not because it's controlled gambling. But uh, it, you know, it's it's gambling with your money in a sense if it's not quite as secure as these these big boys up here, right? So. My two cents, you guys, is that uh, crypto's fine. We are going to be just fine. Everything's looking pretty good here. We need these pullbacks to stay healthy. I know it's painful, but if you just ignore the crypto space for a couple days at a time every once in a while and look away, when you come back, everything will be okay again. And you'll be really glad you didn't sell because if you do sell, you're selling to the greedy whales who are manipulating your minds and manipulating your emotions to get a hold of your hard-earned crypto. So. Things are looking good. I mean, gosh, Ethereum's at an all-time high basically here, you guys. <laughs> when Ethereum's doing well, uh, the whole ERC token altcoin ecosystem is doing well as well. So we like to see that. I think Ethereum is a very solid play right now as far as investment purposes go. Uh, Ethereum's about to do some big things. And I know that you know the Cardano is about to do some big things too as well, but they can coexist. They will coexist. The ecosystem's getting bigger. It's getting more friendly for the retail investor to come in. And um, crypto is now basically entering into phases of mass adoption that we could only dream about three years ago. So happy trading, you guys. Um, please leave me comments and what you think about Save Planet Earth. Um, it's a very, very intriguing project. I'm very curious to see how their marketing goes, what what um, voices are going to be coming out, um, getting behind this, and what exchanges we're going to be getting listed on. And uh, getting in on a project like this early, to me personally, is worth the risk. So not financial advice, but I'm just here to tell you guys what's going on. And uh, I'm going to be trying to make videos more often, you guys. I've I've had a lot of things to do, and but I'm I'm back. I'm I'm back on my blue bouncy ball, and we're bouncing. And Simlips Crypto is back in action.